Welcome back to Explaining Everything, a channel where we take everyday tech, open it up metaphorically and sometimes literally, and explain the magic without voiding the warranty. Today's question comes from our memory mastering viewer at Michael Makum Hecke FX7CU. You asked, how do memory cards work? If you've ever slid one into your camera, phone, or game console and wondered how this little piece of plastic can hold thousands of photos, entire movies, or an entire Pokemon collection, you're not alone. Today, we're diving into the hidden circuitry, microscopic storage magic, and pure tech wizardry that lets a card the size of your fingernail remember more than your brain after three cups of coffee. Let's plug in right here on Explaining Everything. On the outside, a memory card looks like boring plastic. On the inside, it's a tiny city of electronic components. The main residents are flash memory chips, microscopic cells that trap electrical charges to represent data. Alongside that, there's a controller chip, the card's brain, which manages where data is stored, retrieved, and erased. The plastic casing is just the armor. Inside, the real action is happening in layers of silicon, metal, and circuitry thinner than a hair. Think of it like a library that's been shrunk down to the size of a postage stamp, with a tiny librarian keeping track of every single book. And the crazy part? That entire library can still be faster than your home Wi-Fi at delivering your files. Even wilder, that brain can sometimes detect errors and fix them before you even know something went wrong, like a little tech superhero living in your pocket. Memory cards speak in binary, ones and zeros, just like all digital storage. Each one or zero is stored as an electrical charge in a memory cell inside the flash chip. The more advanced the card, the more bits each cell can hold. SLC or single level cell is equal to one bit per cell. MLC or multi-level cell is equal to two bits per cell. TLC or triple level cell is equal to three bits per cell. This is how manufacturers cram more data into smaller spaces. Though it can affect speed and durability, it's like squeezing extra clothes into your suitcase. You'll fit more, but it takes longer to find that one pair of socks. And yes, your memory card doesn't think in pictures or words. It only knows electricity patterns. And it's your device that translates it into that embarrassing selfie. What's even more impressive is that billions of these ones and zeros are being managed in perfect order every second like a microscopic game of Tetris that never ends. When you save a file, the controller chip finds empty memory cells and charges them in a specific pattern to represent your data. When you open a file, it reads those charges, translates them back into binary, and sends them to your device. No moving parts, no spinning disks, just electrons being shuffled around at ridiculous speeds. The controller also uses wear leveling, a system that spreads out data storage evenly so no single cell wears out too quickly. It's basically like rotating your tires, but for microscopic electrical charges. And because it happens so fast, it feels instant to us. Even though your card just did a tiny marathon of calculations in a fraction of a second. The magic is that all of this happens silently, without heat, without sound, just pure, invisible electronic choreography happening under that little plastic shell.
Not all memory cards are created equal. Some are built for quick snapshots, others for 4K video or high-speed bursts. Cards have speed classes like Class 10, UHS-1, UHS-2, etc. that tell you their minimum write speeds. A faster card means your device can save files more quickly, which is crucial for photographers, videographers and people who just hate waiting. Some high-end cards even have extra rows of pins for more data lanes. Kind of like adding extra lanes to a highway so traffic moves faster. If you've ever tried shooting video on a slow card, you know the pain. Buffering, dropped frames, and the deep existential dread of card error messages. And yes, that's why pros often carry multiple fast cards. It's not about showing off. It's about making sure your gear doesn't ruin the shot of the year. Plus, if you've ever seen a tiny card brag about 300 megabytes per second speeds, that's not marketing fluff. That's a microscopic sprinter breaking world records inside your camera. Flash memory isn't forever. Each cell can only be written to a certain number of times before it wears out. High quality cards are rated for thousands of cycles and with wear leveling, they can last for years with normal use. Some are even waterproof, shockproof and temperature resistant, perfect for action cameras, drones or just surviving your laundry machine. That said, they're still vulnerable to corruption if you yank them out mid-write or if the controller chip decides to quit life. Backups are your best friend because while memory cards can take a beating, they're not invincible. And believe it or not, the most common way people kill memory cards isn't by dropping them. It's by losing them. Even worse, you might find one years later and have no way to read the files because the format is ancient. A cruel twist in the life of digital storage. So, how do memory cards work? They're tiny computers in their own right, using flash memory cells to store binary data, a controller chip to manage it, and just enough durability to survive your everyday chaos. From high-speed 4K video shoots to holding your digital Pokemon collection, they pack a staggering amount of storage power into something you can lose in your couch cushions. It's proof that some of the most powerful tech in our lives doesn't have to be big or flashy. Sometimes it's just small, flat, and quietly doing all the work. And the next time you slide one into your device, you'll know you're holding a microscopic miracle in your fingers. One that probably deserves more respect than living in the bottom of your backpack. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe. Also, if you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for tuning in and join us next time here in the channel that answers all the why, what, who, where and how questions you've always wondered about here on Explaining Everything.